In modern day Scotland, two American tourists visit a local pub. Inside, they take a close look at the famous photo of the Loch Ness Monster. But an old man tells them that the photo is a fake and that there is more to the story than they think. The couple sit at his table and settle in for the whole story. In 1942, during World War II, a boy named Angus McMorrow stares out at the water. He fantasizes about wading through it, but the fantasies turn into nightmares as the boy imagines drowning. Back in the real world, Angus stays away from the water, collecting shells from the shoreline. He thinks about his father, a sailor in the Royal Navy, who told him that the pool was a strange, enchanted place. Under the water, Angus finds a large, strange-looking egg in the sand and decides to take it home. Angus is found by his mother, Anne, who orders him to come home. Angus and Anne return to their manor house on Loch Ness. Angus rushes off to hide the mysterious egg in his dad's garden shed as his sister, Kirsty, arrives, asking if Angus had fun on the shore. Anne reminds her daughter that Angus doesn't tend to have fun these days. In the shed, Angus takes a moment to cross off another day without his father. Removing the rock from the bucket, he starts to wash it, removing its dirt coating to reveal a luminous blue coloring beneath. As he rushes off for dinner, the egg begins to move on its own. That night, Angus is disturbed by a sound outside. When he glances through the window, he discovers that the shed door had mysteriously opened. Angus goes down to check out the problem and immediately sees that the egg has hatched. In the dark, a mysterious creature rushes around, hiding from him. Soon, the mysterious thing reveals itself to be a strange, alien-like creature. Angus grabs a potato and starts feeding him, slowly earning the animal's trust. Noticing that the creature has a cut, Angus attempts to bandage him up, promising to take care of the animal, but keeping it a secret from everyone else. The next morning, Angus wakes to see a parade of military vehicles arriving. Believing that his father has returned, Angus, his mother and sister eagerly rush out to see it up close. But Captain Thomas Hamilton reveals that the Royal Air Force has been tasked. Cinema recap here. We've got a little challenge that'll take five seconds and it will change your life forever. You ready? All you gotta do is like, subscribe and hit that notification bell and you'll receive 10 free years of good luck. It's as simple as that. With taking over the manor house for a military operation, Angus realizes that these trained killers pose a threat to his new friend. As the soldiers set up camp in the house, Captain Hamilton explains that the soldiers are preparing for the threat of German invasion. Angus returns to the shed to find that the creature has ripped the place apart in search of food. Hoping to protect his father's belongings a little longer, Angus goes to get some food for the pet, but the army cook, Sergeant Strunk, refuses to let him get any. Thinking on his feet, Angus grabs the garbage can and drags it to the shed. The creature dives right into the trash can, eating just about everything inside. Angus decides to name the creature Crusoe, after the book Robinson Crusoe. As Crusoe enjoys his feast, Angus begins researching what kind of animal is living in his shed but none of the possibilities make sense. Angus recalls how his father told him all about a mythical monster that lives in the lock and how he always wanted to see it. Angus realizes that the creature, which appears to be some kind of fish, is all dried up. He pours a bucket of water into a trash can, hoping to help the little guy survive. A pair of fishermen on the lock catch some fish for lunch. They notice the military setting up the artillery battery on the hill. On the hill, Captain Hamilton explains that the officers have been tasked with defending against the threat of German U-boats that have been found roaming in nearby waters. While wandering the grounds, Angus finds one of the troops, Sergeant Walker, holding a dead deer. Once again realizing the threat these guys pose his new friend Crusoe, he runs. Anne enters the shed to find the place in total disarray and mess. She takes a moment to remember her husband, but is interrupted by the arrival of Louis Mowbray, the handyman Anne hired days earlier. She tasks him with cleaning up the mess of the sheds and emptying the place. Anne reveals that she suspects Angus is keeping a pet in the shed, something he's clearly not allowed to do, and asks Louis to handle the situation. Angus steps out of the house to see Louis emptying the garbage can, but to his surprise, Crusoe isn't inside. Angus fights Lewis, hoping to protect his father's workshop while he's off fighting in the war. But Lewis insists that the workshop is his to do whatever he wants. That night, Angus wanders the grounds calling out for Crusoe, something Lewis notices. 
Inside the manor, a rapidly growing Crusoe explores the family home and accidentally crosses paths with the military dog, Churchill, who chases him. Crusoe narrowly manages to escape, but the housekeeping staff blame the military and their dog for the damage. Angus is about to give up the search when Kirsty lets out a terrified scream. He rushed up to find Crusoe hiding in her filled bathtub. Angus assures his sister that he won't hurt anybody, and he makes her promise not to tell their mother. She reluctantly agrees. Anne asks Lewis to check out the guest bathroom and brings fresh clothes that once belonged to her husband. He politely declines, asking if he will need them when he comes home. But Anne reveals that her husband isn't coming home. His ship was sunk a year ago, and he's been presumed missing ever since. Anne explains to him that Angus is confused, clearly unable to accept his father's possible death. Angus and Kirsty do their best to keep a still-growing Crusoe quiet, but nothing seems to be working. Lewis arrives to fix the bathroom, which is apparently out of order. Against Angus's orders, Kirsty lets Lewis inside, where he sets eyes on Crusoe almost immediately. Lewis wonders if Crusoe is perhaps a water horse, a legend from Celtic lore. According to legend, only one can exist in the world at a time. When one grows old, it lays an egg and dies. The new egg contains the next water horse. As Anne searches for the children, Angus asks Lewis for help. Before Anne can enter the bathroom, Kirsty and Lewis distract her, claiming that they were helping Lewis investigate the problem. And, thanks to them, they fixed it. Anne's suspicions get the better of her, as she heads into the bathroom regardless. Inexplicably, they find that the bathtub is empty and the water horse has vanished. Lewis helps to deceive and mislead Anne, having hidden the water horse in the toilet. Suspicious but believing the ruse, Anne leaves the bathroom. On the way down to the ground floor, Anne bumps into Captain Hamilton, who invites Anne to a meal he's organizing as a token of gratitude. She happily agrees. Lewis advises Angus to get the water horse out of the house and into the lock the best place for him. But Angus desperately refuses, believing that the best place for Crusoe is to be with him. On the night of the meal, Anne goes through her wardrobe, finding one of the classy dresses she hasn't worn in a while. In the bathroom, Angus feeds the water horse tinned fish. Kirsty interrupts, telling him to come and see what's happening downstairs. But on the way out, Angus's makeshift sign prevents the door from closing. The water horse, scrambling to get the fish, falls out of the bathtub. In the kitchen, the military and the house staff dance together, but Churchill the dog can smell something strange and darts off to the source of it. When Angus and Kirsty walks in on them just moments, Angus realizes that the dog is missing. Upstairs, the water horse wanders the hallways only to come face to face with Churchill. No longer on a leash, Churchill chases the water horse over the house leading to much destruction throughout. Reaching the hunting room, Crusoe is horrified to find himself surrounded by stuffed, mounted, and dead animals everywhere. Angus and Kirsty follow the sound of smashing and crashing. During the military meal, Captain Hamilton and Anne hear the loud crashing noises throughout the house. Eventually, the chase breaks into the rigged banquet hall, with Churchill recklessly running across the table, leaving a massive mess behind. Crusoe manages to escape without being seen. Lewis apologizes to Anne and the military, explaining that he was trying to catch the dog. An unimpressed Captain Hamilton expresses his unhappiness, but Lewis refuses to take orders from him. Anne orders him to take Angus to his room, something he agrees to do. Outside, Crusoe poses as a statue, a disguise that successfully fools the dog. When he finds a pond full of fish, Crusoe dives in and starts eating. Searching for Angus, Lewis intercepts him, promising to find the water horse if he goes back to his room. Reluctantly, Lewis does what he's told. As morning breaks, Lewis finds Crusoe, now much, much bigger, in the pond. He brings Angus down to take a look. Lewis and Angus drive to the lock, sending the water horse back to its natural home. Captain Hamilton waits for Lewis in the shed, ordering the handyman to stay away from Angus. In Hamilton's eyes, Lewis is a bad influence. While out on the water, two fishermen accidentally hook the water horse and find their tiny fishing boat being dragged along behind. Reluctantly, the fishermen cut the line to save their boat. 
Taking Angus under his wing, Captain Hamilton pledges to turn him into a disciplined soldier. After days of training, Angus breaks free and escapes from his oppressive military life. He returns to the lake to find a now fully grown Crusoe, who's happy to see him. Crusoe gets Angus to ride on his back, despite the boy's fear of the water. After a little swimming, the water horse begins to dive, against Angus's wishes. But, over time, Angus comes to enjoy himself, overcoming his fear of the water in the process. When they return to the surface, Angus notices a strange metal net being set up, clearly a trap for submarines attempting to enter the lake. While out for a walk, Churchill the dog breaks free of his military master and goes in search of the water horse. Angus convinces Crusoe to hide right as Strunk arrives, but it's too late. Sergeant Strunk sees the creature as it descends below the surface. Angus tells Lewis and Kirsty about Crusoe, and thanks Lewis for making Angus laugh. Captain Hamilton, watching their conversation, is dismayed to hear that Lewis is clean, a good man with an unblemished war record. He's a hero. In the pub, the fishermen eagerly tell the others about the mysterious sea beast they saw. The locals suggest that this news could bring tourists flocking to the area. The next day, the fishermen arrive at the lock with a camera, preparing to get a photo of the creature in hopes of getting rich. Meanwhile, Captain Hamilton takes Anne and the children to see what they're doing at the lock. Hamilton reveals that the military is about to practice firing cannons into the lock. Angus tells his mother about the creature in the lock, but she doesn't believe him. Kirsty backs him up, but it's no good. The cannons are fired into the lock, many of them almost hitting Crusoe. Angus tries to interrupt the firing, angering Hamilton. After telling Anne that her son needs discipline, the family are sent home. Realizing that the creature will never resurface after the bombardment, the fishermen decide to stage a fake photo of the Loch Ness Monster, the famous surgeon's photo. For a month, Angus is sent to his room at 6 every night and not allowed to leave. Seeing the fake photo in the newspaper, Sergeant Strunk reveals that it's exactly what he saw in the lock. Sergeant Walker eagerly vows to go hunting for the creature. Kirsty quietly breaks Angus out of his bedroom prison with Lewis's help. They head to the lake, where Angus calls out for Crusoe. The water horse rises, angrily roaring and biting at Angus. Regardless, Angus tries to reconnect with his friend. Still haunted by the bombardment and near-death experience, Crusoe almost bites off the boy's hand before disappearing into the water. Having smelled the water horse, Churchill leads the military to the lake. The soldiers take to the water. Armed with harpoons, Crusoe kills the dog and surprises the soldiers. One of them calls in an SOS. Crusoe blindsides the soldiers, capsizing the boat. Hamilton apologizes to Anne, but is interrupted by the SOS call. Believing that the Germans are attacking, Hamilton orders Anne and the kids to go into the basement. Discovering that Angus is at the lock, Anne prepares to get him against Hamilton's orders. At the lock, Crusoe terrorizes and almost kills the soldiers as Angus tries to put an end to the carnage, wading into the water. But Angus slips on a rock, sliding under the water and falling unconscious. Crusoe dives under, grabbing him and saving his life. On the shore, Lewis tries to wake him up. Hamilton drives Anne to the lock, ordering his men to fire at will if they see anything moving in the lock. While he's unconscious, Angus recalls his final interaction with his father, in which he was asked to be strong and sure. Angus gasps to life, happy to see his old friend again and much less aggressive. The water horse disappears into the water as Anne and Hamilton arrive. Angus and the soldiers attempt to explain everything that happened, but it's clear nobody believes them. Anne accuses Lewis of putting nonsense into the heads of her children, insisting there are no monsters or magic, just war and death. Anne turns to see the giant creature, proving her very wrong. Angus insists that the water horse is peaceful, but the moment is broken by another cannon being fired. Angus tries to save Crusoe, jumping on the water horse's back and hoping they don't shoot at him. His terrified mother is forced to watch as the cannons fall. Hamilton, Anne, and Lewis race to the underwater net as the soldiers continue their violent onslaught. Angus does his best to guide Crusoe to the net through the barrage of cannon fire, but the stormy weather makes the soldiers mistake Crusoe's neck for a submarine periscope. 
Angus realizes they have to go underwater, and the pair just about make it to the net. Still believing that it's a German U-boat, the soldiers begin raising the nets to capture the target. Angus and Crusoe come to a stop at the nets. Hamilton, Ann and Lewis arrive, encouraging Angus to let his friend go. Reluctantly, Angus lets go of the best friend he ever had and returns to his family. Crusoe dives beneath the water and triumphantly jumps to the net, bringing the military equipment down in the process. Crusoe disappears into the distance. The next day, Anne and Crusoe watch the sun rise over the lock. Angus finally comes to terms with the fact that his father isn't coming home, and the group reunite to see the water horse swimming off to freedom. The water horse lets out a final roar and dives under the water for the final time. Back in the modern day, the old man explains that some have claimed to see the water horse in the passing years, but Angus never sees it again. And he knows, because he is Angus. The tourists leave the pub, satisfied with the story. Outside, a young, concerned mother searches for her son, William, who wanders along the beach. He spots a large, unusual-looking rock that looks exactly like the egg Angus found, suggesting that Crusoe has died and left behind a descendant who will become the next water horse.